Welcome back to another Quick Cinema 4D tutorial. I uh, just wanted to go through quickly how to uh, get yourself set up to make some realistic smoke that you could use for a uh, campfire, a volcano, um, or just a cool motion graphic uh, text or something like that. So um, I'm just in a blank scene here. Uh, let's see, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the shaders that I'm gonna need in order to make this effect happen. So we're gonna go down here to shader and we're gonna just find our pyro cluster and our volume tracer. We're just gonna leave those there. Um, and then the next thing we need to do is we need to simulate um, a particle emitter, okay? And then what we'll do is we'll rotate it so that blue arrow sticking straight up, holding down shift as I rotate. And, uh, and now basically my, my smoke is gonna go straight up. And um, so you can, you can already play through and you'll see that you're shooting out um, these little particles that no matter what you do, um, you're not going to see anything quite yet. Uh, so let's set up some basic lighting. We're just going to give it kind of like uh, two tones on either side here. Light number one will have like a little bit more of like the kind of orangey sun color. And then we'll do kind of an atmospheric tone on the other side. So the blue sky and then the yellow smokes. Uh, and then we'll do shadow maps soft on both of these. And then all we need to do is add an environment um, for this volume tracer. So this little yellow pencil looking thing, you're gonna put that on your, your environment and you're gonna put your pyro cluster on your emitter and you're gonna go ahead and render. And well, something's definitely happening. You've got this puffy little cloud thing, but uh, my light's not affecting it at all, so it's not really looking that good. Um, so I need to um, do a couple things just uh, texture-wise to get this looking good. So, um, so the main thing we just need to do here is come down to um, settings and uh, in the pyro cluster shader that you put on your emitter, and you're gonna find these different settings. We're just going to click on uh, Volcano, and we, yes, we are going to uh, use those parameters. And we're just going to do a quick test render here. Uh, might take a second. And look at that. Um, those parameters inside Volcano are allowing us to absorb the light uh, that we're creating. And now we have a much more realistic looking bit of smoke. So you can imagine, um, you know, if you wanted to make a volcanic animation if you want to do something like grab a landscape and scale it way up we can rotate it around so we don't see that kind of give it a cone and there we go we've got this the beginnings of what could be a volcanic explosion or some kind of explosion or a forest fire um, so Right away, you know, you've got the ability to make some smoke or whatever you want to do. You can play with some of these other settings. Um, you know, some of these might not give you much of a result. So steam is, you know, that's going to be probably a smaller scale effect, something for like machinery. Um, we can do a fireball effect. And there you go. There's your, uh, there's your explosion right there. Um, that sort of took over my texture and added different colors, but uh, it still looks pretty cool. And we can do, we did steam, let's try cloud. And so cloud looks kind of similar to what we started with, um, but this should at least absorb the light. And it's actually taking a, a while to render here. Um, so this might have just a lot more volume um, that, that it's using to create out of these emitter particles. Um, but let's, let's take a look here and see what kind of volume comes out of it. So yeah, you can see it coming in here now. It's just super dense and um, honestly not really what we're going for. So we can just go ahead and uh, leave it at Volcano and render it again. It should be a bit quicker this time. And there we go, we're back to our original effect. Um, and I, if you know anything about particles, you can obviously do some, some fun stuff with this. So if you click on the emitter and go up to simulate particles, 
um, you could add something called a turbulence to this. So by default, if you watch, you know, they have a little bit of wiggle as they're coming out of the particle emitter. And if we just up the scale to like something like crazy, like 160%, uh, you know, they're gonna start really kind of blowing around. And, and, and this might be an effect you're going for with like a fire or you know, something like that, that's, that's, or something coming out of a smokestack of a house. Um, you know, this is gonna really uh, mimic realistic smoke a lot more. And you can even up the strength on it. You'll notice now we're getting this big particle differentiation. So that's, uh, let's tone that back down, something like this. And let's just let it run. And now let's give it a render. And we should now see that the, you know the uh, the volume of the pyro cluster that, that it's creating is it's got a little bit more. You know, you can see the top there; it's got a little bit more variation. Um, you know, we can also do something called a wind. Uh, we can simulate particles wind, and we can just set the direction. If you want to move it over and kind of set it up there, you can. Um, by default, if you turn it on, look at that; it's just blowing something away so maybe you've got you know a, a steady persistent wind in your scene and you want to have um, you know you want to have a little bit of wind action going on just to turn that down a little bit oops I actually turned it up oh four um, you know now we've got a little bit of a of a drag going on inside of our uh, are smoke particles, um, and so they kind of follow that in a more realistic way. So, anyway, um, I think you've got enough there to play around with it. I um, I use it for um, animations all the time, um, but I typically just use it for when I'm creating some pretty realistic smoke, and I use this volcano um, parameter. Um, so. By all means, share with me some of your uh, findings on, on what parameters you like to use for different uh, applications and uh, help the community out. But um, anyway, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you learned something and stay tuned for more Cinema 4D tutorials.